Hello. Welcome. John says, FYI, you're one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Oh, really? That's pretty awesome. Um, don't hear that every day. Man, makes me really upset that I'm not putting out as much content as I'd like to. But I'm working on some stuff. Working on some stuff for YouTube. I have a lot of ideas, just also very slow to execute them. Okay, so today, these two players faced off in a best of five at a cafe somewhere in Montreal. Player of the year and win percentage, highest win percentage of the year. Number one, number two. These guys are the real deal, you know. They're such, they're such the real deal that they played in a defunct lexicon. <laughs> uh, what? Do I have, what's the best way that I have of doing this? Does this, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. It's annoying. I should make a, a scene. Yeah, I should make a scene that actually works. Yeah, it's annoying. I told him to fix this. I told Cesar to fix this formatting. That way I wouldn't have to make an, 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 another scene. But, hey, at least we can actually take a look at this, these games in the correct lexicon now. So thank you to those working hard uh, for Wiggles. All right. So I went first, which means I had an inherent advantage. Inherent advantage. This is... That's better. That's what it usually looks like, right? Something like that. Um, and this is my opening rack. And I only really considered Koof, COOF, and MOFO. But neither of those plays looked anywhere near as good as uh, Tom Cod. Tom Cod also Tommy Cod. Valid word. Yeah, who, who among you guys watch these games? Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, I have all of, I have everyone's racks. So yeah, this play of any is very difficult to play, but it does score well. Yeah, I was streaming them only on Twitch, John. Um, which is why you might not have seen them. But, yeah. Jackson played Noyad, which makes a lot of sense. Does give a lot more back. But he could consider it probably in this position that he's at a disadvantage. He's going second. He's not scoring as much as me. His letters aren't very good. Um, so adding a little bit of variance is probably fine. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how well uh, this play or this play does in a simulation later. So, okay. Um, and yeah, as I said, play could give back a lot. I had this very nice play of facts, keeping GNST, and if I could draw a couple vowels, 
I'm in business here. I just become more blurry when I turn 30? Wait, what do you mean? And hello, Ruby. How is the rest of your stream? Anyways, I played Fax. But Jackson got a good draw himself and gets Fajita down for 49. Uh, and to my TNSG, I drew blank VT. And this is a very curious position. The plays I considered were Vang for 16, Ting for 14. I briefly considered exchanging and didn't want to do that. But it's probably quite a good play to exchange here. And I saw Vat and I was like, Tov's just a bitter version. Uh, Vat takes a U hook. Um, whereas Vat also blocks this part of the board. Given that I have an S and a blank, I'm happy to create both these two threats here. But again, this is, yeah. The problem with this is if I don't draw a vowel, um, I might not bingo. But what's cool is that this O in Tomcod and this I in Fajita especially will allow me to bingo even if I draw like two constants like frosting or um, yeah, like stinging. Lots of lots of possibilities. So that might actually Yeah, that might mean that Tav isn't so great because it still allows like scoring plays through the T, which would block those possibilities. And that VAT does maybe a better job because it's sort of harder to play through the V, though more lucrative, so maybe not yeah. That's where you start overthinking. But I think just the concept of Creating this spot and this spot seemed pretty good to me at the time. And Vang, although probably a little bit safer in terms of what it gives back, like this G isn't very dangerous, uh, and it keeps three constants instead of uh, four with the blank, means I'm going to be able to deal with more racks in general. But uh, yeah, top seemed nice. Uh, but Jackson responded swiftly with whisk, which I can't imagine is wrong, keeping ID 64 points, which, yeah, that'll happen. So sparks flying. I drew AI, which is very, very nice. One of the best possible draws. Um, and, of course, I'm looking to play here. Hey, PB is led. Uh, and I took a while here because I was trying to put a vowel here that wasn't a blank and I could not see a way to do that. So I took a while to look for like, okay, anti-sag against, that's with an A, Gitano's, um, uh, the other one was uh, Gitano's, man, these agonist, these high probs. Um, I thought Gitano's had an anagram Maybe a third anagram, but I didn't see it. Uh, so Gitano's plays. And I actually don't know why I didn't play that. Come to think of it. I ended up playing... I guess it doesn't really matter. I ended up playing in gates. But potentially better to play Gitano's just because it's a little harder to just play a bingo after that. But it's easier to make an overlapping play. So maybe... maybe my choice was actually better. Uh, and yeah, to genes also, maybe some problems with overlaps, but nothing nothing major. So I think the three plays are pretty equivalent. Uh, and I thought I was doing all right here. I'm up 42, but Jackson just destroys me here with dithers for 108. Beautiful, beautiful find. Um, hooking all of these two-letter words. And yeah, that was that was nice. So we really had a uh, 
we really had a game on our hands. And I didn't like my draw. Hey, Hyper, how's it going? I didn't like my draw here. I didn't see anything good. Um, I don't have a letter for oft. I can't underlap here because I don't have a letter here. Um, and I couldn't... Um, I couldn't find any eight-letter words. But it looks close to certain words. Uh, but yeah, I ended up playing Grub. I guess Doorbug is worth considering. But now that I'm down, like, significantly, I think I'd rather do this. It creates, if I draw an E, which there are ten left, I get ED words here, potentially. And uh, this is a lane that I can work with. Yeah, I think Grub seems pretty good here. Um, other things just block things, like Doorbug might seem nice to create like an S hook, but there's only one S left, and um, this lane, the M and the N columns to employ a term used in chess. Um, these are superfluous lines. So usually by blocking one, you block the other, but it's relatively easy to deal with both of them. You can't really count them as two separate threats. Uh, so Grub is my play. I was not feeling, not feeling lucky, but um, yeah. Did you know that word, Ruby? Male gypsy. Jackson quickly played O Y A Y. Yeah, I could see why this. You don't want to do this. This lane is better than the other lanes that exist. Um, but it is four more points. But this is nice because it handles a lot of the bingos that would play down here. You can no longer end in an E unless you have a consonant or something that goes here. Then you can put the E here. You end in R, S, N, I guess. Uh, so yeah, this makes sense. I think it's probably fine. The leave is better. He's going to bingo a lot more. Um, and then I drew quite well here. Um, I had a re decliner, reclined, um, relined, red line. Uh, but best of all is lingered. And it has an anagram of N girdle, which I should have considered. Oh, this might be a mistake. Um, the difference here being that I can get it quite hard down this column. However, to my advantage and fortune, uh, Jackson did just play OY, which does not tend to signal that he has dangerous stuff. Probably doesn't have a V. Probably definitely, almost definitely doesn't have the Z, although he's known to keep the Z a lot because... It's always a good weapon to keep, but it did not feel like he would be keeping that. Um, like cozy is so many more points immediately. So luckily for me, in hindsight, this might be fine. And in girl might actually not be as good because although I'm taking a small lead, still probably not favored to win this game based on his last play. And based on the fact that it's his turn. So maybe it becomes a question of which gives more bingos back. When this floats an L and E. This one floats an L. D and I. Yeah, it's close. I don't really know. Maybe I should be going for the, uh, going for the Z. Girl. What do you mean, girl? And girdle. Girl? Do you think I should play girl here for five? Maybe. Hello, RC. Welcome. We're looking at game one. 
of this exciting the people that just frequent this cafe we were at have no idea that they are bearing witness to not only the two best Scrabble players in North America asterisk in the NWL division or lexicon um, but also the second biggest Scrabble streamer on Twitch. Wow. Incredible. Okay. So Lingard comes down and Jackson draws RU and gets to play Ruralize. That's his only bingo. And I draw the Q. And, uh, yeah, this is a bad position. This is quite a bad position. But there's still hope. The board is somewhat open. This exists. This whole area is wide open. And you can do things to maybe open some more stuff, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, I considered playing Twerp for 30... Quip, which is like really bad because if he just has an E, he's scoring massively with Equip. First thing I saw was Tripe, but although that does give me a spot for the Q, that's just not good enough. Keeping a W, I already have this Q spot. And I don't want to interfere with the space, I think, at this at this point. Um, it would be nice to make a play that sort of Allows me to draw into equip, but that's too likely to get blocked, and it doesn't seem to be a play like that. Um, but yeah, I ended up playing Wiper, as PV is led says. Um, and what I'm yeah, what I'm doing here is um, it's unlikely he'll block this Q spot. There are other Q spots anyway. Um, so the the plan is to leave all this space open. And drop the Q next turn most of the time and, and try to hit a bingo. Because um, I'm probably going to need one. I'm down 60. I'll be down 30. Yeah, it's going to be his turn. There's some pretty good things unseen. There aren't that many landmines either. Like, he could have a bad rack, but not many terrible racks exist other than, like, obviously, full vowel racks or full constant racks. And there are tons of vowels left. Take a look, 18 vowels, 13 consonants. That is very, very unbalanced in, in terms of uh, what's usual in the Scrabble game. So I can expect to draw a lot of vowels. Um, but there's also this play of writ, which is interesting. Didn't see this play. That does retain Potential of equip, but I need to draw an eye. There are only two eyes left. Yeah, I should have seen this. I don't think it matters. I think this is just better for the board anyway. Okay. And Jackson has this rack. So an N would give him a Colleen. Almost has auricula. Oh, but this is quite good, this play of Olic. Huh. I wonder if he missed this. It's kind of not so great because, yeah, now after this, the Z really does hurt in both of these spots. Um, and there are tons of vowels. So actually the play that he made of Oracle might be better even though it's seven fewer points. Uh, but it leaves only one vowel versus two, which is a big deal with there still being a decent amount of vowels from Jackson's perspective. 13 vowels, 14 constants means he's gonna draw an equivalent amount. If he draws three vowels, he has four vowels. You don't wanna have four vowels. You definitely don't wanna have five. So yeah, this play, it's possible he didn't see Olic. It's possible he did see it. 
Um, but this place seems pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it might just be a little bit too dangerous to play Olic. Oops. So, this is my draw, which is very good. I drew both this Z and the blank. Um, and the unseen letters, although some are good, seems quite likely he's going to have some vowel trouble. Um, so the immediate thing I saw here was Blitz, 42, which actually brings the game within 11 points. Um, the problem being with this is that it sort of depends on drawing a few consonants. Um, and sort of gives up on trying to bingo soon. Because although, again, the same thing applies, where you can play QI on the next move, um, there's a lot less space open. Um, so, yeah, I really did like this play at first glance. It's bringing the score close, and I have decent chances of outrunning. There's still a U I can even draw. Uh, but I figured that it's probably better to just play QI now, even though it's very hard for me to make a move like this where I have no chances of bingoing next turn, at least from what I saw. There didn't seem to be any any draw that I could get immediately that would give me a bingo, which for some reason I stray away from those plays. Thank you for the raid, Agent Cosmographer. So I was looking at the chat, like QOPH, which is a play I miss all the time, so I was... Worried I'd actually missed it. Um, wait, is Austin actually streaming live now? Should I just raid him now? Oh god, they're trolling me, guys. What am I going to do? Yeah, thanks for the raid. I did a lot of infinity words. Ten letter word. That's not a word. What? What was the word? I thought I was so smart. What was the word? What word was that? I didn't see. It's too small. If you've been using. Is that light mode that you were using? Anyways, cool clip. I was just explaining why I forewent to the play of Blitz for 42 in favor of QI. My thinking is it's pretty unlikely Blitz is getting blocked to begin with. So if I draw a constant next turn, I'm very, very happy to play Blitz. Um. I don't draw a constant, I have boards, I have lots of ways to get rid of the, uh, the Z, I can just play ZA. And that was a big factor, it's like, well, if I play QI and then ZA next turn, I mean, I'm probably going to bingo a ton. And in total, these plays score 53 points, which ties the game, which means that he needs to be averaging, like, 30 40 points to make up the deficit if I end up being going in three turns and the unseen letters weren't so good and there weren't that many good scoring spots on the board so I felt pretty confident with my decision to play QI um I also saw that like quotable is possible um no quad libit but almost I guess he could put a either unlikely but yeah i i decided to go for uh for the the long game here and jackson draws very nicely because he draws 
five consonants, which puts again the vowel consonant ratio in a very vowel heavy situation from his perspective now. And he ends up making a play he said he might have regretted because he thought this play left 10 in the bag. So basically what he was worried about is if he plays Maven and then I bingo, um, he sort of would prefer there to be three in the bag after I bingo so that he can maybe make a two tile play and keep things close like DE. It's probably what he's thinking for 27, leaving one in the bag, which should give him decent chances of, of winning, even if I do bingo. Um, but instead, this leaves nine in the bag, which is a little bit less good. Uh, but this is also great that he was putting a lot of emphasis on how many tiles he's leaving in the bag, because this is, a, I think, very underused concept near the end of the game. Uh, with tempo. Tempo is so important. Leaving the right amount of tiles in the bag can be a humongous advantage. Sometimes it's way more important to think about that than scoring or the leave you're keeping. Um, so I ended up playing Maven. And this is great because it feeds into like maybe some sort of idea that he might be thinking that I'm going for a bingo with QI when I'm not. I'm actually not going to bingo next turn at all. Um, but yeah, I think Maven is a great play. He could do this, which sort of deals with a lot of the space pretty well. Blocking that, but yeah, leaving this, maybe leaving things through the R. But I think, yeah, going the route of being ahead by over 60 is pretty, pretty strong here. So it's probably the right play. Um, and I draw the A, which is actually the best vowel I could possibly draw. Uh, because that means that he's not going to be able to use this spot to play Aya. And like high scoring plays here. Um, and also means his, his rack is just less balanced because there are only four types of vowels rather than all five. Um... But yeah, here I can play Blitz again, but since I drew a vowel, I'm sort of really worried about drawing too many vowels here, and Jackson's now up 62. So I don't think I can really outrun him that often after this play, unless I get constants I'm able to bingo. So I end up going with my plan of just playing Za. Um, I also considered playing Bola, which I think does a better job than Blitz at trying to outscore. I'm keeping the best scoring tile in the game. Um, but again, it just doesn't seem good enough uh, considering the amount of tiles left in the bag. Um, unless he just has really bad letters. So yeah, I end up just dropping the Z and I'm, I'm bingoing with T-bowls or style whatever um, through here. I'm bingoing with a bunch of things through the I. I'm bingoing here. bingoing through this E probably as well through the R. So he can't really stop me, and I'm hoping he'll try. Um, because, yeah, at this point, I, I'm not necessarily winning if I bingo. But it's still looking pretty good. Uh, oops. Let's put this back. So Jackson has this rack with eight in the bag and he plays Ope, which I think is really the only play to consider. Um, unless there's a bingo. Yeah, Ope. Ope for 35, again, increasing his lead up to almost 70, which is a really, really the sweet spot um, when you're ahead. Like if you're, yeah, Maven is a Scrabble reference. Yeah, Maven is the uh, original Scrabble engine. True. Developed by uh, Brian Shepard. I think in the 90s, right? It was pretty damn good at Scrabble at that point. Um, so yeah, the sweet spot of being up 70 points when 
you're trying to fade an opponent's bingo. So Opes comes down and I draw an I, which I was looking at the unseen letters and I was very um, optimistic about my chances if I bingo here. Um, but those that optimism, optimism quickly withered away. Um, I ended up playing Lobtail. Yeah, you can do Tabloid to Bully Lobtail. I don't really think there's a dip, much of a difference between these plays. And even if there was, I really wouldn't be able to figure it out. I think Tabloid might be bad because like Goon scores a lot of points. 29 points. So that might be too much for me to handle. Um, I'd be uh, I'd be down 15 after Goon. And I'd be getting not, uh, 6, 9, so I'd need 10 points. Oh, so actually probably not a big deal to give up Goon here. Um, but yeah, this is a position that probably required a little bit more calculation. Uh, WTF, can you remove infinity words from, from my chat, please? Otherwise I'll, I'll ban it again, but I appreciate, appreciate your bot being sent into my channel when I was live earlier. Um, but yeah, I think what's important here is that, um, I'm drawing four. Um, well, I asked earlier, but not really psychic. I'm down, uh, I'm drawing four and I'm going to be going up by 14 points and drawing four is not very good, especially when there's a lot of duplicates because you kind of want to go out before your opponent. And if you're drawing four, your opponent has seven. If you're not going out and you're only up 15 points, there's a good chance your opponents can be able to win. Um, but you have to sort of look at the threats. So if he has the L, he has plays with Loft that score very well. Very well. Otherwise, he doesn't have great scoring plays. Um, are there any bingo threats? Um, longer. Yeah, this, this required some more thought. And uh, I didn't give it more thought. I thought just for sure I have to bingo here. Because like if I don't bingo, what am I going to do? Am I going to play LA? I play LA. I'm not drawing into a lot of bingos with B-I-O-T blank. Like I can look at drawing if I draw E-E. -E, what do I do? Um, even I... I mean, he's just going to block pretty well. So it really just comes down to how how likely, I, how likely do I think I am to bingo if I don't bingo this turn versus outscore him in the end game. And I thought I was pretty likely to outscore him. Like if I could just draw one constant, I thought I could threaten to go out or I could just have a high scoring play. Um, and I'm curious to look at it because, yeah, I played Lobtail and drew four valves. Um, and it's actually, it's interesting to look at from the perspective of Oped, what was in the bag. E-E-E-G-N-O-O. -E -E um, U. E-E-E-G-N-O-O-U. So yeah, I I don't want to look at all of all of those four tile draws to see what happens. But yeah, once I drew the four vowels, I knew I was I was lost. Um, and Jackson, I saw that Gel is probably gonna win. I was like, whatever. Uh, he finds he plays Noel instead, and um, yeah, I could play O's. I didn't actually see that. I ended up playing Jew because I could, because it's unplayable in so many lexica and jackson has many many spots to play off gen for 16 he chooses this one and a very good game to start things off 
475 to 456. Unfortunately, this game wasn't streamed because uh, I forgot to go onto the Wi-Fi when I was streaming. So the connection wasn't very stable and I just lost connection and the stream just died very quickly, I think. Yeah, maybe he challenges and then I can play Euro or whatever. That would have been funny. Uh, but yeah, very good game to start. Jackson ends up winning 475, 456. Uh, drawing none of the blanks. So, yeah. Let's look at... So this is a high-quality game. Let's look at the... Uh, let's look at the engine analysis now. Hi, Chess Bunzo. Oh, wrong... So, yeah, I wanted to look at this play of his. Um, actually, I should probably reload this. So that's in the right lexicon. Yeah, so the play is to consider these two and this one. Let's see what Quackle thinks. Hello, RC. Again. I see your eyes above my head. <laughs> um, so he opted to play Noyad, which I said was pretty aggressive, but it makes sense. Uh, yeah, these plays are very, very close. A-Y-E. Um, also, the metrics that Quackle are using, the metrics that Quackle is using, I've been having a lot of trouble with my English lately. It's kind of scary. Metrics Quackle are using, I said it again, metrics that are being used by Quackle. Um, yeah, these days we think that vowels might be better than what Quackle thinks. So if Quackle is saying that a play that keeps a lot of vowels is fine it's probably the right play so it looks like aye probably fine here rather than noyad um Yeah. But yeah, I totally get the urge to play something like my ad. Um, Fax Vita. Yeah, I'm looking at this play. It's a very interesting play. Didn't think of Vig. I guess there's some idea of playing Tobs and trying to bingo, trying to triple triple. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, let's exchange maybe TTV. Let's see how an exchange does. Um, yeah, soon I'll be able to run Macondo, a better engine than Quackle. It'll help maybe, hopefully it'll be fast enough. Uh, that I'll be able to get results faster than this, which I have to wait. Like, if you can see this small little number uh, getting larger and larger, those are hundreds of games that it's looking through or faking looking through. Um, but I usually wait until there's like a few thousand iterations. So maybe while we're waiting, um, wait, how long have I been streaming? Okay, I can't take a break. 
Uh, maybe we could go back and start looking at game two. But yeah, all these options seem very, very close together. We probably, I'll just probably just write about um, yeah, big let's plays with, let's look at this play, Viga, uh, Tav, let's plays on the O column. Thing doesn't allow me to score, so that leaves me with less of um, less of a problematic. Usually, Jackson analyzes these games, but I mean, he's been analyzing so many of our series that and he's he's busy this week so I'll, I'll, I decided I'd help help in that respect um interesting All right, so yeah, all these plays seem close. Bang has a very small edge over Tav, but doesn't mean all that much. Uh, I think Grub, I don't really need to analyze this much. Uh, Lingered and Ingirdle. Ingirdle is going to do better in a simulation, for sure, I would say. Inferring from Jackson's lead. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I, I see things like lingered and I'm just like, whatever. I've gotten to so many positions where, yeah, I just missed an equivalent play that was potentially worth considering or better. Um, so a play like QI I might have wanted to consider because it's possible that I'm drawing into like bingos but who knows QI for oh QI for 28 yeah probably better better QI yeah it's between twerp and wiper twerp I guess does a better job at um, eliminating some annoying plays like from the R, like Oracle actually, that do decent things to the board. Whereas Twerp creates a lane here, and if you ever play through the E, there are more lanes. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. And yeah, QLT versus QLR. Usually, I think the T is better to keep with the Q, but. It's very, very situationally dependent. Okay, this seems fine. And yeah, let's look at Oracle versus Olic. I actually think Jackson, even if he missed Olic, uh, Oracle's probably better. Yeah. Yeah, the sim is liking his play. Nice. Um, okay, good, good, good. 
And the moment of truth, does the engine like my choice here of QI first? I tend to think that the Q almost nullifies the value of the blank if you have both. Um, but obviously, again, with the Q, like I just said, things are very, very situationally dependent. Blitz would normally be nice. But with the prevalence of vowels, I think it's better to play now. And the simulation here actually doesn't quite understand the value of QI because Whenever Blitz isn't blocked, it's just going to play Blitz. So if it's liking QI, I'm pretty sure it's by far the best play. Sim likes this by four. But I'm sort of like committing a logical fallacy, maybe. Because I'm saying that because my play of Za is so good, I don't actually know if the play of Za is that good. Like it's good in this situation, I'm sure, but not in every situation, maybe. So I'm sort of saying, oh, because the play I planned on making in this exact sort of situation is correct, which actually, wow. Wow. Sim is saying no, no, no. So let's reevaluate this position. If I play Bola, I keep, what am I threatening? I'm not threatening ansats. Uh, I can't draw ansats. Um, I guess I could get trues through the R. Am I bingoing a decent amount? What is it saying? Details. So let's look at this. These details here. Next turn, after Bola, I bingo 27% of the time. Is that good or bad, WTF? Green and purple Reese's egg. Yeah, Eugenol doesn't really have a home, but yeah, uh, that was something I was considering. Um, wow. So it's hard to say how correct this info is just because quackle does one of its flaws is that it doesn't do a good job at predicting what happens in end games this far away even close uh, it has a lot of issues like for some reason it miscounts games so i don't actually know if i should trust this num these numbers here but again, like it seems like I'm I'm being like I'm sort of saying, oh well, when it likes my play, great. When it doesn't like my play, oh, this is why it has, it has a a flaw. So I don't know. I might be um might be wrong here. Maybe I should play Bola. So thirty percent of the time, what am I drawing? I'm drawing like unitize. No, all the blocks that stuff. Notarize, not really. 
Eratized, eratizes, I guess. Um, triazol, not really triazine. Kind of. Wow, that's crazy. And I guess it is also possible that I'll be able to play Zaw next turn. Like maybe he won't empty the bag and then I play Zaw. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it. But again, this could just be because from so far away, I was just misevaluating how likely it was that I was going to win even after a bingo, after this play of Zaw. So who knows? Um, huh. Goal bat? What about Golbat? Did you know that one time... Actually, I think it was when my friendship with C.L. Smith was at its peak. Well, shit. Who's gifting C.L. a sub? Maybe C.L. is gifting himself a sub. I guess somebody likes Pokemon. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. But CL Smith on his channel, if you like Pokemon, has a Who's That Pokemon channel point reward on Twitch. And so you have to come to Twitch to find his channel. But I once had him find a Zubat and told him if he destroys the Zubat card, I will buy him a pizza. And yeah, very, very fun moment on stream where he did indeed destroy the Zubat card. And I did indeed get him some pizza. So good times. Um, Uh, yeah, Quackle says plus 10. I really, this is a huge, huge, huge difference. I want to Macondo this position. Okay, so now we have to look at all of the things that happen. So Lobtail, first of all, it's possible that the engine has a good idea how often I win here. I don't know, maybe it's you, WTF. Maybe you're the one. But the only way we can find out, potentially, is if somebody else starts talking about Pokemon in my chat and then gets gifted a sub if they're not already subbed. That would be, that would be the only way to find out what's actually going on. All right, 70%. Shuckle! 70% <laughs> it's saying versus, yeah, these plays, maybe. So let's say if I play Bio and like Noel comes down or something, do I win? Yes, I do. Yeah, so maybe leaving one in the bag is a good idea.
Uh, but you'd have to look at so many things. Makondo would actually be able to find out how good this play is. So let's look at, so he had LEN. So let's look at all the possible four tile draws. Let me, okay, so it definitely was WTF gifting to himself, I think. Unless the person just appreciates WTF's commitment to, to Twitch streams. Hey, why didn't you remove infinity words? WTF, did you remove it and bring it back? Okay, let's look at okay, E E E G E E G N E G N O and I think are these all the draws? No, they're not. It's also E E E N E E O E E. U E E O U E O O U I'm missing a lot of draws. G E N U Yeah, Mr. Monopoly, I don't know, man. Scammed. Are those all the all the four tile draws? E E G O. Wow, not even close to getting all of them. Oh man, there's so many. Okay, let's just try. Let's just try. So I assume I lose here. Yes. Okay. E E G N. This I win. Okay. So one out of two. E E E G N O. I just, I must win here. Yep. One out of two out of three. E N O O. Oops. I must lose. Yep. Two out of four. E N O O. Soon I will not have to do this, which is going to be a great time. Wait. What did I just do? I just did E N O O. Didn't I? Yeah, I just did E-N-O-O, E-N-O-U. I think E-N-O-U, we, no, I actually don't know. I don't think this wins, I think this loses. Yeah, two out of five. Yeah, they're not equal probability, I know. But this is just giving me a rough idea. E-N-O-U, G-N-O-O. I probably win here. Yeah. GNO, GNOU. The things I do for you guys. Yeah, GNOU wins. Wait, why does this win? I guess because he just has too many E's. Was it four out of seven? One, two, three, yeah, four out of seven. G O O U must lose. There's no out go spot. Oh. Really? I guess because he's just not going out. Five out of eight. Oh, I, oh, oh. Wow. But yeah, he's also just not going out. Crazy. Yep, makes sense. Checks out. All right, so far so good. So far so good. Need to go up in the chat to find all these draws. G-O-U, 
N O O U must lose, right? Yep. Uh, e E E N. Okay, outgun, very nice. Okay, E E E N loses. E E E O has to lose. E E E U has to lose. E E O U E O O U. Okay, G E N U. I assume I win this one. All right, so it might actually just be less than 50%, or close to 50% that Lobtail wins. And that means that it's very much worth considering not playing it. Um, also might vary a little bit based on the draws. Um, but yeah, now that you're all back from the ad break, Seems my play is maybe a, a toss-up, a coin flip. Which means, yeah, something like Bio keeping ALT blank is pretty good. Drawing into a lot of bingos. Problem is he's going to block pretty effectively. Um, so I don't really expect that this is better. But it does make it a little bit more difficult for him. But I think if I play bio and then I bingo, I, I should win. Like, what's the biggest threat? Um, e, 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 G, L, N, N, O, U. Ah, there is one bingo of Neo Gene. Okay. Obviously, I lose to that. But yeah, I don't think I can lose to, like, outgun if I bingo. Well, actually... I might lose if I draw E E E and I only have like oh I have Legate T. Yeah, I still lose. Okay, Outgun actually beats me. Which is pretty bad. Uh but only if I draw E E E, I think. Very interesting stuff. <laughs> These are winning by one. Crazy. All of these, all of these moves are winning by one. Wow, that's crazy! Hello, Muffo Tentacle. Crazy stuff. Okay, so Outgun will beat me if I draw E E E. And how many ways are there? There are four E's in the bag, so there's. Let me. I need to visualize the E's. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. How many ways are there to draw those E's? One, two, three, four. But since I'm not emptying the bag, there's more than that, right? Hey, we get popcorn. Am I good at boggling words on stream? Well, that's relative. I would say relative to my peers, no, but relative to your average Twitch viewer, absolutely. I don't like words on stream, though. We have a better version of it that you actually missed out on. Um, but let's give a shout out to Ancient Cosmographer again, who rated us. Um, he usually streams every week or so, uh, with his, his program that he, that he, uh, built himself, which is just a better version of words on stream. People collaboratively, tons of words. Um, it's not as predictable words on stream. There are only like a select amount of tables. So people that play words on stream a lot can just remember the answers of those tables rather than actually using their brains to anagram. It's a lot harder to do when you're using the full dictionary to do that. Um, the hidden and fake letters and also the way letters are shown. Yeah, there are no, I mean, you can play in Scrabble, you can use these blanks. 
And those are sort of like a hidden letter, but they're not, they're never fake. You need to use them. Anyways, uh, right now I'm actually just analyzing some games, playing against the second best player in North America today. Um, I'm looking at some possible end games. Yeah, it's kind of hard for him to block everything after bio. So it could be that bio is the play. Um, yeah. Hmm. To Neogene out gun. Out gun seven F. And okay. And there's no way for me to like open more space, which is a problem. I guess there's something to be said maybe about keeping the I for I C words since he's likely to try and block in this area. But there aren't that many IC words, so. Uh, let's go back to what actually happened. He played Noel. I played Jew. He played Jen. All right, that's game one. Let's continue. That took around an hour, but that was a really, really interesting game. Yeah, Jaw is a word. Yeah, it's hard to pay attention to my rants, so I appreciate those that do, to my tangents, I guess. So this is game one. So let's go to game two of five. But these other games are not as interesting. Um, I guess this game was decently interesting, but I don't think I'm going to analyze it that much as I analyzed this last one. All right, let's go back to here. There we go. All right, game two. Is Austin actually live? Should I, should I read him? Because I'd probably be streaming longer than him. Um, exchange UVW, is that? Is that what it says? Okay, so Jackson exchanges his UVW. His opening play. Keeping pin blank. And I draw a very nice opening bingo of co-title. And there's something to be said, I think, about playing it here for four less. Because it means that if he has a seven letter word, seven letter words won't play anymore unless they somehow overlap like five or six times. Um, but still yields a lot of eight letter words. So it's probably fine to just take four extra points and assume that I'm not really stopping him that much. BB-8 offsets. Hello, Cheesy Gazebo. Does it extend to co-titly? I don't think so. But I did consider it. Yeah, co-title means indicating coincidence of the tides. So I guess you can't really make that an adverb. Fair enough. Jackson draws to P-I-N blank, J-I-E. 
And he forgoes this play of Aji. Which, upon... Yeah, when we talked about this game after, as I said, probably should not do that. But his reasoning was that, like, he's giving me potentially high scores here. And even if he bingos next turn, he's going to be behind. So he's playing the long game. He decided to play Pine. This sort of opens this part of the board. But if I could just overlap here, he's probably not in good shape. The J he's not going to bingo with. Maybe he draws an A for Taj. I don't really buy this play. Um, I think he overthought the position and he should just get rid of his J and his extra I and just try to bingo next turn. Even though, yes, I can overlap pretty well and yeah, I might be stopping him, but yeah. I think this was a missed opportunity. Jed is also interesting. Uh, even though he's keeping two eyes, he's drawing a decent amount of bingos through the C, uh, which is now somewhat protected. And yeah, I don't know. So he plays Aji. And, um, oh no, he doesn't play Aji. Sorry. That's what I wanted him to play. He played Pine. And I draw the other blank immediately. And took a long time considering whether or not I had a bingo here. Um, yeah. Do you guys see any bingos? I thought beef rocks might be a word. I didn't think it was a word. Beef rocks. It's not, and obviously it'd be better to play it here. Yeah, after I couldn't find a bingo, I considered whether I should play Burke or Burks, which is weird because I could also just play Kerfs, which I never saw until now. Yeah, I saw potential breakfast. There might be a, a nine-letter word available here. Um, Actually, what did I see? I saw that, like, Um, no, I don't think I saw anything. But yeah, I think Kerfs is definitely worth considering here for 31. Um, but 27, keeping the S, probably just too good to, to uh, pass up. I am sort of creating some space down here for him to work with, but that's okay. It's good to be aggressive with the blank, and yeah, I think this is totally fine. Burke comes down. Um, and Jackson, to his credit, does draw into a pretty nice play of Jailer for 42, staying within reach. Um, but I draw into a bingo. Elk and Kerf for 22. Yeah, that's not, not the worst play, but yeah. Um, and here I missed, oh, dude, I missed Effusion in that same cafe. I missed Effusion against Jackson. And it was vertical. Here I played Refusing, where an Effusing is just better because A, it scores two more points because it puts two real letters on the double letter scores, and also... Um, doesn't create as big of a scoring spot through uh, using this triple here. So, yeah, miss of that. That's really annoying. Um, definitely a mistake. And wow, Jackson had a very bad, seemingly bad position here. Defusing better than effusing? Well, it's better than effusing with, yeah, the way you marked it. So I, I assume Jackson thought about Vi, and then he settled for playing combi, which does a couple of good things. It opens this part of the board. Um, it keeps IV for jive if he draws an E. Uh, if he draws a W, he gets view. And yeah, he's really just opening the board when he's down over 100. This makes perfect sense. 
Um, so yeah, he played column B, which I assume is the best play. But it sort of sucks. Uh, and I went a little bit buck wild here. So in this position, I could just play Jail for 33. And I'm keeping QU together. If I draw another A, again, I have this play of Quag, which is what I ended up playing. If I draw an N, I have Quirin. If I draw an E, I have Queer. If I draw a number of other things, I'm going to be able to play off this, this Q. Um, but I didn't think about playing Jail for long enough. Um, and ended up playing Quag, which is a nice play. It scores very well. It keeps decently, but it doesn't do things I want to do. I'm already up 100, so yeah. Uh, if he triple triples, that means the game is going to be something like tied. Um, I don't want that. I don't need. I don't need that in my life. But um, it still might be fine because there are other ways he can come back. Of course. Um, you hate to see somebody come back within one move, but they could easily come back within three or four moves. Um, and maybe even even more likely that they'll do that. The G is not a huge threat in a triple-triple. You basically want like an N to be here, like ingested or something, and that's just not likely to happen. Uh, but this does leave this double-double open, leaves the J open for easy scoring. So I think playing Jail or even Jarl, which I didn't see at all, is a good counter option instead. Uh, I also considered playing Liquor, which sort of blocks part of the board and keeps things a little bit tighter. But I ended up playing Quag, and I think this is fine, but what wasn't fine is how I responded after. Um, Jackson had this rack, and... He played Jive. I think that's what he looks like he had, yeah. Uh, I think he was thinking, well, it's too easy for Josh to score from this J. I need more than just an 80 point bingo. I'm, I'm assuming he saw these, these bingos um, and decided to forego them to sort of prevent me from scoring as easily. And since he's down by so much, potentially aid himself in drawing an even bigger bingo next turn. Um, so I think this makes sense, but it might also just be too many points to, to give up. Uh, and here I have this rack. And I was sitting there in this position just like, man, what have I done? This rack sucks. Should I block this B? Should I block the triple triple? He probably has a blank. He didn't play a jive instantly. Like most of the time when someone plays jive, like what are they considering? I couldn't imagine that he would have thought so long about jive unless he had a blank. And so if he has a blank, a, he's more likely to hit the triple-triple, and B, he bingo's next turn, I should be able to respond, but these letters are not fit for that purpose. No matter what I do, there's a very high chance there's a very high chance that my next rack isn't going to be so good either and won't be able to score much. Um, but what's important to recognize is this spot. Now, I don't have any plays here right now, other than like red, which is not a good play but if i keep this d i can draw into like 30 point plays so it's definitely worth con considering keeping keeping the d for that reason and just also the d is better to keep when you're ahead because you're going to be able to score something with it um but i just couldn't find a play through this g that i liked i figured any play through this e is just going to open bingo lanes not really score anything uh, and I think the only other thing I considered briefly was this play of Brill, which does deal with this K-column threat, um, and which I might prefer. 
in hindsight. Let's see. Yeah, I ended up playing Laird, which just, it looks like it's like defending against things, but it's really just giving him a free triple if he has a blank. Like, just so much of the time, just giving him a high scoring bingo he doesn't have otherwise. Um, but yeah, oh, this play. Oh, this is the play. Okay. Yeah, I just did not see this play. Argil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the play for sure. It basically does the same things that Lara does. The problem is it keeps no vowel, but that's okay. Um, it's not a big, big deal. And yeah, it doesn't open a triple. Blocks things. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Yeah, I knew I'd, I'd screw this up. I basically handed him a ticket back into the game. Uh, and he played avoided rather quickly. Nothing else to consider. Um, then I had this rack and I was feeling not so groovy here. Um, did not spot any plays that were great here. Um, there's a threat of an X-bomb. There's a threat of maybe... Z hurting a lot. There's, yeah. I'm still in a decent position here, but I can't imagine that I'm doing so much better than Jackson is. Um, but yeah, I could play that word. There's just nowhere to play it that I found. Um, so I ended up playing HA for 23, which ends up like blocking some stuff and yeah, taking a 40 point lead. But yeah, with AELOR, it's really just a. Like, shot in the dark, am I going to draw something worthwhile or not? Like, it's just not good. Okay, there's this play, which I did not see. Which, yeah, makes sense. I uh, probably would have ma made this play if I'd seen it. Looks better than this. Um, just to keep a little bit less of a problematic uh, leave here. Um... Yeah, AER seems pretty good. All right. Yeah, missed that. But I ended up apparently blocking a bingo. Let's see. Jackson had the infamous Epinaoi bingo, which before my play fit right here, making A-R-O-E-I-F. But I somehow blocked it out of nowhere. Jackson played opine, and Jackson's thought here is that if I had a D, I'd probably play H-A-E-D for more. If I had an S, I probably wouldn't play something so cagey as H-A. So the um, hooks are not a big deal. An opiner is not a word. Just making sure. <laughs> So I, I like this decision by Jackson, and to my AELOR, I drew another pair of AH. Very interesting, as Vladimir Kramnik would say. Um, and so I first considered playing Haler, which does take an S, and a U, by the way, Haleru. Ended up playing Aloha. 34, not super happy about it, but I think... It's totally fine here. Um, Jackson drew the D and had fainted. Wow. So this play of HA somehow just like blocking so many bingos, which that was not my intention. Uh, he plays fade for 45. He's now only down six points. Uh, but I do draw the X, the problem being I'm nowhere close to a bingo. Jackson could very well be close to a bingo. And I consider playing X for 39 and X for 41. If I play for 39, I'm setting up my W, I guess. Um, it didn't really seem worth doing that. When after this play, I have some options like through this O that might, or through through either of these O's that might, might be worth doing. I don't know. I'll sim it a little bit. Hello, I'm pretty good. Nice. Nice. 
but I should have played X for 30, 39 for some reason. Uh, because Jackson has this bingo of cat mints, which brings him ahead by 19. And ERRTW does not improve here. I draw UR, or sorry, UN. So the dreaded UW combination, but I found a nice play here of Newt for 40 points to retake the lead. So if I can maybe draw one of those S's or maybe some scoring tiles, I have a chance here, but still definitely Jackson's in the driver's seat now. Yeah, opiner is one who opines. Jackson actually held this play. I think he was holding Ides. Um, which is funny because it's a four-letter word. We're supposed to know our four-letter words, but we don't sometimes. But yeah, he ended up accepting, so no harm, no harm in, in holding, right? But yeah, he draws touters right out of the bag, plays it, and at this point I, I can't win, and like I was pretty sure it was a word, but um, I just challenged. Like, maybe touters is somehow not a word. Um, oops. And, uh, yeah. Even if touters isn't a word, I think I still lose. Yeah, I, I definitely knew it. I definitely knew touters, but yeah. Uh, Jackson just plays Masson here. Whatever he does, he wins. Look at these unseen letters. And I had this rack. Yeah, if Towers comes off, I play Rugs and Slid. And maybe I can hold on to the game. Bacon? Macon? Maybe. In French, it's Masson. I find my only spot to play my Z. He plays Yao. I play Sugar. He plays yay. And so game two also goes to Jackson, 523 to 410. I think I know where I went wrong here. Uh, but yeah, rough one. So let's take a look. Garçon, yeah, exactly, same. Oops. Here we go. So I want to look at this first. Let's move it along. Yeah, as expected, the engine prefers so far. Play of Aji by a decent amount. I think Jackson overthought this one. And I'm just saying plus eight on something so early in the game, probably you made a mistake. Um, oh yeah, punging is Collins only. Punging, I like that word. Yeah, Burke looks fine. Um, if using for sure a better play. Okay. He Played Combi. I really like this play. Let's see what the engine thinks. I guess with this play, you do draw a lot more bingos. Yeah, after Vi, we bing 
Jackson bingos like 50% of the time because he's drawing stuff from the sea to the sea. Also blocking a lot. I don't have a play through the J. But yeah, this looks good. Wow, he was down so much and he came back and won by over 100. Crazy. I really think I should have played Jail. See it jump up to the top. No. No, live dangerously, says the engine. Hi, Matt O'Connor. You know full well that you are <laughs> dealing in a different rating system. Um, that overvalues you. <laughs> He's in the YouTube. He's in the YouTube. WTF. I want to go to YouTube to say hi to Matt O'Connor. We had a quote from you earlier this stream. One of my quotes. But yes, welcome to Matthew O'Connor, 2100 rated North American player who is very proud of himself. High five, Crab. So let's look at this. I think Jive is probably fine. Let's look. Yeah. Um, yeah, this would have it would have worked out way worse for him, I think, if he had bingoed, unless he drew like super well. Yeah, here I just missed. Here I just missed our Argil, which basically threw the game away. I'm up a hundred and I threw the game away. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, just because the engine likes this play doesn't mean it's right. I think I screwed up in, in hindsight, but also in reality. Uh, so, yeah, here I considered Oha and Lota. Oh, I didn't consider Lota. Yeah, I think Lota is just a better play. Thank you for following MISC. If you're just joining, I'm reviewing game two of five um, in my ongoing weekly, usually weekly series against Jackson Smiley, number two player in North America in the North American Dictionary. Uh, we had some very interesting games. Um, I lost the first one and the second one, uh, but I had three games to recover and potentially take the best of five. I also streamed this earlier, but apparently my, the, my clock, my digital clock was like 
um, being very annoying to look at on the stream, which I did notice at some point, but I was doing a very, very passive stream, so I didn't really want to intervene too much. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, gift to be able to play, uh, such a strong player and yeah, sort of like playing that player without having to focus on streaming is, is it sort of feels, feels, uh, right to not really like focus my energy on the stream when that's happening. Yeah, the ZMF clocks, such a scam. But like, I really like those put those punch button clocks. So if someone's feeling really generous, um, and wants to buy me a birthday gift, I would be very happy to use a push um clock that doesn't have led led display chronos is it a chronos i don't know you have a dgt clock like a dgt clock would be good for streaming because i could probably use it to transfer information onto a stream wcf Um, that would be amazing, actually. You believe you could be 2100 too, RC? I believe as well. Um, is sitting on the floor for years? It probably doesn't matter. Um... Otherwise, did I just turn into uh, Tom, Tommy, 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 Tom, is that his name from the room, Tommy, otherwise, Tommy Wise, though, exactly, exactly. Um, Tommy Wise, though, you've never owned a DGT 3000? Didn't realize I could do that. Yeah, so I don't know. I looked into this for DGT clocks. It doesn't seem as easy as you might think to transfer the clock information, but I'd have to check it out. Seriously, WTF, like that would be awesome. Um, I can pay for shipping if you want to send it to me. Um, and obviously you can, you can use it whenever you, you want. Um, DGT boards are the, yeah, DGT boards are the harder part, I think. I think DGT clocks are probably not that bad. The way that streams are, are doing clock times right now is they're using um, very, like, they're using unideal um, clocks. So basically, the best clocks are ones that are, like, you can just physically touch and whatever and they're easy to use and they don't like they don't screw up like they register your your touches and all that but on streams on stream games right now uh they're using either a phone or a uh, a tablet because the only way we figured out to transfer the time information rather than getting the clock times on a camera on a separate camera is by using a feature on Apple devices that transfers information um, 
in a way that a stream can um, translate it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very weird system, but it works. It's just that those clocks aren't as good. It's really good to have like the best clocks. But so like first thing I considered when, when I was discussing potentially potentially um, transferring clock information rather than having it on camera, which is what we had like before, uh, is yeah, DGT clocks. But um, yeah, this other thing seemed to be easier. I don't know. I'd really like to test the DGT clock to see if I can get clock times on stream because that's such an important part of information to stream. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I should do something like Halo or Hora. I'm not sure. Uh, let's look at X for 39 versus 41. Don't you dare tell me that this is better. MSI's approach to creaming stream boards is that simpler is usually better. So you know about MSI's approach to creating streamable boards? Weren't you like super, super young when they were doing that? Mind Sports International. They invested $10,000 in a RFID Scrabble board that was supposed to register every single tile that hit the, hit the board. And it didn't do that very well. Oh, they tried it for NASSC. Okay, I didn't realize that. Wait. Oh, yeah. Wait, was that in 2019? Did they try it or did, have they given up at that point? When I was there in 2019, I know that there was a guy from MSI who used to be from MSI that was working there. 2015. Yeah, okay. Um, Zorai has to be right. Yao is right. Sugar is right. Okay. That's game two. I think that's all we wanted to look at. Let's go back to Wiggles. So I'm now 0 and 2. Against Jackson, and he went. He's been winning the series. Like I think he won like ten of the last twelve series or something. And so I'm feeling really not so good. I mean, I was actually fine. I wasn't tilt. I don't think I was tilted. I was just like, well, I feel like those were two good games, and I knew what I thought I had d done wrong in the previous game. So I was I was okay. I think. Um, but I did not want to lose. So my opening rack was this, and I didn't even consider playing drink. That's not a good start. I ended up playing kinder. Uh, yeah, drink is pretty probably just a better play the e is probably worth keeping here yeah but you can't play pre-kindergarten there's too many letters you have to play kindergarten and then pre-kindergarten but i was yeah anyways i won't spoil i think drink is just better so that's pretty stupid but what's even stupider is what I did in this position. And the next position. So in this position, I was like, okay, I probably have a double-double. Okay, Coney Ions. So I saw the word Coney Ions, really cool double I word. And I was like, oh, but that has an anagram. 
it has a weird anagram, doesn't it? And a few seconds later, I came up with weird anagram. I was like, okay, is weird anagram better? Yeah, it looks like better. Better idea. I play Inocene and this doesn't take an S. So I was like, I know the anagram of Coney Ines doesn't take an S and I could catch him on it and it's a weird word. And I'm not really so worried. I think this is just a better version. It doesn't string an S out there. And then I played it. Uh, Jackson holds. And Jackson challenges. And it's not a word. And for a second there, I was like, wait, what? Are you, are you serious? What? Am I crazy? Am I insane? Coney Ines has an anagram. What else could it be? Does this work? Why don't my things work? Why don't my sound alerts work? I know, I know. I was just testing it out. I need to look at my sound alerts to see why they don't work. Well, I quickly realized what I had done Um, and what I had done is confused, um, whatever, I know scene, maybe I N O S I N E with Ossinine, O S C I N I N E. And the crazy part is I knew, I knew Coney Ines had an anagram. I knew it was weird. And I knew it didn't take an S, but I just reversed the I-N. I put the I-N at the beginning instead of after the OSC. It's just like, I, if I just thought about it for like one minute, one minute I would have realized that it's not Inosine, it's Ossinine, and I just play Codeines. Then I said, oh, I realize now what, what, I, what I did. Jack's like, oh, you shouldn't have told me that. I was like, oh, come on, dude. Like, He's just going to block. He's just going to block the O no matter what. And here I'm just really tilted. I'm like, I just lost two games, hard fought games, and I'm just like, I just played a phony completely for no reason. I played it within like 20 seconds, I think. Within 20 seconds, I played it. If I had just thought like another 30 seconds, I wouldn't have even used a minute. I probably would have realized that Inosine was not the right word. I would see Asinine and be like, oh yeah, that's the word, isn't it? And I've had this same dilemma before. I've, it's come up before. Um, I, I don't doubt it's come up at least once in my games. Um... I feel like it's come up with five crab. I don't know. I feel like it's come up between in one of our games or something. So now here I'm just like, okay, he's just blocked me. And then I'm like, oh, boxings. No, that's foxings. I was like, oh, foxings is the word, not boxing. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just seems to ring a bell. I have no proof five crab. I'm like, okay, boxing's not a word, it's just foxings. And I'm not thinking about boxing as the sport boxing, I'm thinking about boxing as, like, boxing. Like, of course boxings is a word. If I just thought about boxing as what it is, the sport, almost all sports are pluralizable. And so then I would just play something with boxings once I realized that I probably don't have a double-double through the A-B. I also saw this, which recently came up absence in absence was on the board in Poughkeepsie 
And I wondered about whether it took an, a D. I ended up hooking it with an S. But I thought it wasn't a word. And I and it, it came up like many years ago. Absence, whether it's a verb or not. Uh, but yeah, it's not a word. Um... And so, yeah, I was thinking, okay, what about in absence? Maybe that's a word. Uh, it's not a word. Anyways, I ended up being like, whatever. I mean, I can't find anything starting or ending in E. So I'm just going to play incensed. And I'm still ahead. I'm ahead a little bit. Like, it's an even game. But of course, I should just play with boxings. Whether I play sensing or I open the triple... I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. But, yeah. There at least isn't a word ending in E or starting in E, but... Yeah. I end up playing incensed. Idolizer. It could have been just like a Blitz game, dude. Like, I don't know. Or a game on, on Scrabble. On, on uh, Play Scrabble. I don't know. Anyways, I play Incense, which is just absolutely horrible follow-up. And then Jackson immediately just plays something with boxings, and I don't even hold. Like, so sometimes when you do something like this, where you, like, could just hook an S onto something or make a hook, and you don't, then your opponent does it. Like, often I'll just want to challenge out of sheer, just, like, uh, consistency. It's like, I want to be a consistent player, I don't want to have made a mistake. So if I chose not to hook something, my opponent hooked it, that means if I let it go, I made a mistake. So I have to challenge. It's sort of like I've already got my foot into the door. Like, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a psychological way to play. But here I had already know, I already knew that I screwed up big time. And I was like, well, I already screwed up. And yeah, and then I saw he put an S on I'm like, oh yeah, of course that's a word. Boxing, like the sport boxing. So I didn't even hold. <laughs> I didn't want to give him an inch, even though I'd already given him the game. And I had this rack, and this rack just killed me. I, I uh, had no idea what to do here. I have the R hook for AIS. I'm not going to do like aerobe. I could play Ori. I could play Rue. I mean, he probably has another S. Um, I can't do anything here. This is the biggest problem. I have no play here. Um, and I ended up settling on with Cuber, keeping EIO. Just like terrible, terrible play. Um, Corby might be a better version. Keeps only two vowels. But yeah, all the plays suck, and I put myself into this position. I guess Urebi is fine. Didn't see it playing here, like, so it's terrible, but it's fine. Anyways, now I'm definitely losing this game. Like, I'm definitely in a worse position. I know he has an S, but, like, putting an S hook here isn't really a big deal. Um, whatever. I have to do something because, yeah, he's eventually probably going to play here before me, score well. I'm not going to be able to do anything. So I played Cuber, and he also made a play keeping EIO, and he played Poos for 28. And I thought this meant he had the, the last S, but this makes perfect sense knowing what he actually had uh, because this is the biggest scoring spot on the board, and the S doesn't have that much value, like I just explained. Uh, but this at least gave me a very nice play. The only good play in the position, Anopia. So I continue. And Jackson still trailing and having pretty rough racks. I asked uh, Scrabble Kitty if she would update the dictionary, but she hasn't gotten to it yet. But that's fine. Uh, so here Jackson plays Yoga. Yoga takes an S hook. He doesn't have it. But he could also be playing into my thinking that he has the last S. So however often it is that I don't have the last S, um, I'll probably assume he has the last S with Yoga and I might sacrifice points to block. Um, but he doesn't want to play Yogi because that takes a C hook and an N hook as well as the S hook. Yeah, it's a word now, Song and Dance. Um, at least in NWL. 
and it'll probably add it to CSW at the end of the year. So yeah, yoga looks like a good play. Um, but still, like both of us are struggling pretty hard here. Uh, here I play four. I did not see this, but yeah, that can't be better. Or that can't be better. Okay. So four looks fine. It's an even game. Uh, Jackson's able to score very well with OWE, which makes sense to keep his D um, for later. And I draw pretty well, I guess. And my original thought was to play Jarred, but that just gives so much back on the triple. And it is like, it is a tempo game. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no real need for me to just give him a very big spot. I did not see this. Oh, this is a, oh, oh, this is the best play. God damn it. Yeah. Yep. Even like Earth. I didn't see. Setting up dearth. But yeah, if I draw AE, I get Jade maybe, AI, AG. Yeah, this is probably the play. I ended up playing Hodge, keeping ERRT, which is a bingo prone leave, but also keeps two Rs, which might land me in trouble. I saw that I had this sevens lane, this A, I could play through the E. Um, there are good, there are good chances of being going here. So I went with Hodge and there's only one O left, but of course I can't assume Jackson doesn't have the O, but still, uh, it's not that big of a deal. So I play Hodge. Um, yes, opponent always has an O. Jackson plays Doth, keeping AEIU. Must not have been super happy with that, but seems fine. There are lots of constants left. Uh, why incense over incenses? There's no difference really between the two plays. I decided to play incense just in case Jackson thought it wasn't a word. Like, incenses is never getting challenged. Incensed might get challenged like once in a blue moon. Um... I don't know. I, I didn't have any thoughts other than that. Yeah, Doth comes down. All right, this rack. I played Ferret. Um, not super happy to get rid of both the E's. But I figured it's fine. What was crazy is that there are so many T's left unseen. So I did not want to keep another T. Although the play of Doth to me signaled very likely that Jackson had another T. Turns out he didn't, but um, yeah. Am I going to have to start moderating you guys? Jesus Christ. See, I considered Fort and I considered Ferret. I thought, yeah, try to go for the blank maybe. I don't know. Score more. Still definitely behind here, I would say, just because my letters aren't so great and there's a blank out. Third seems fine. Um, yeah, Jackson did not have good letters. He played full instead of flu or fuel. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Wonder why he did that. Seems like you'd want to keep an L. Oops. And I wasn't really sure what to do here. I ended up going with what I thought I was supposed to do, which was just saw. Um, after Zah, I can draw some sevens here. 
No, I don't. Does it take an S, Muffin with Tentacle? Frorins? Yeah, here I can draw, like, rename, um, remune. But also, I'm just scoring well. Again, I still thought he had the S, so, like, I thought there was some defensive value in taking the spot. Uh, the other play I considered was Mazer. Which, based on his play of full, might not be that bad. I mean, but he is pretty likely to have just drawn a V or something that scores here. Which is not a big deal. But maybe like a V here. It might just give a little bit too much back. Foreign, foreign, foreign. I'll certainly remember that. But again, the idea with Mazer is to go to dig deeper for the blank. Um, try to power, power my way through this position. It actually might be better. I'll take a look. I can also just chill. I think this is a decent play to just chill. I have some decent options for my, my letters. Like I don't have to go crazy. So who knows? Um, here Jackson played T-I-L, which makes sense. He doesn't really want to play, maybe he wants to play it. Um, yeah, he needs to keep scoring. Yeah, his, his racks have been so bad. Wow. Crazy. Um, whoops. So I draw EV, and I consider playing le Lever or Lev. Lever, yeah, I figured Lever was probably better equity, but I have one of the last few E's, and the game is close. Like, I really, I figure the next person that bingos is probably going to win. Um, But, yeah, I think... Uh, lever gets me further from bingos than lev because this is just more balanced but again i'm sort of depending on drawing vowels i also consider just playing vex to go for the sevens here that i discussed before um so yeah it's it's a tough call uh, i don't think i'm hitting anything else with this fish yeah, I decided to keep things a little bit complicated. Lev, I'm still like pretty tilted still. Um, I guess Jackson was considering Nug or Culex. He decided to go with Culex. I don't know about that play. Probably prefer Nug. Not sure. I'll have to take a look. And I draw the S, and I'm feeling, like, decent now. Like, I have an S. Unseen letters aren't so good without the S. Um, and, yeah, it's my turn, and I'm only down one. So I decide just to go for it. I play Imp. This is a cool play. I never saw that. Just try to bingo next turn. Problem is, leaving 11 tiles in the bag... If Jackson manages to play a lot of tiles, um, or just four tiles, my bingo is going to empty the bag. Um, and I don't want that. Um, you really, when you bingo in closed positions, you really want there to be tiles left in the bag so that you have at least another move if your opponent bingos. That could be very valuable. But it's also not so easy to play, like, four tiles on this board. There's really not that many options. I was feeling decently at this point. And, yeah, here... Oh, Ferrety. Interesting. wonder if Jackson saw this. Uh, but he ended up playing Tivy. Keeping the G again. But yeah, this goes for bingos, maybe. Tries to go for the blank. 
uh, yeah, he was not happy with like any of his plays this game. And then I just drew the best possible letters. But I am in the position where there's seven in the back. So I am going to bingo here and that'll be it. We'll see. And so the first thing obviously I wanted to play was latrines. It's the highest scoring bingo. Um, but it seems as though pretty much no matter what in this position, now that Jackson has opened one spot for the queue, that if I make if I play a bingo that makes a second spot for the queue, um, and Jackson does not bingo out, I'm going to win. So I started considering like other options, maybe like straighten or nitrates, um, like stuff like retrains. Uh, before we played Tivi, I was considering D trains, and then I saw like okay, nastier. This does pretty good job. It's kind of hard to bingo after nastier. Uh, and then I saw I was like okay, well Anestri, and I was like actually I could lose after this play. If Jackson has just like a Q play here, like Quag, like I played last turn uh, for 54, um, and I don't draw super well, I could potentially lose uh, because that would tie the game up. So I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to only lose to Bingo, so I decided to play Antsir, which appears to only lose to Bingo's. Um, Umiak, Maki, yeah. So, where are bingos going to fit? They'll fit here. They can fit here. Like, out bingos will fit sometimes. You can get nines. Um, but that's about it. So, I was somewhat comfortable with this. Um, but yeah, obviously not fully comfortable. But if I draw the Q, even if there is some way for him to block both Q spots, which he can't, that is likely enough to draw like Qua or something, or QI. So I'm not getting Q stuck. I'm only losing to Bingos, it looks like. So I play Ansier, and I draw the blank, and not the Q, and I'm like, wow. Jackson plays this really quickly. He's hoping that I like freak out and mess up and maybe phony. Um, and I couldn't really see anything. I was trying to find plays like Duvet um, or like like this, but yeah, I was running low on time and I couldn't believe I was like winning. But I saw that he had QA and whatever bunch of spots to play Cot or Qua, so I was just play outed whatever. Um, to use like a poker term. I won out at him or whatever. Uh, and I won 371, 341. So one of the worst games ever. Um, I always tell people that I, I never win games where I phony like I phonied this game. But it feels damn good. No, it feels horrible. It feels absolutely terrible. So I'm not even going to uh, go into analysis here because I just feel like it's a moot point. Um, I'll analyze after the stream. Let's go to game four. So now it's one to two. Um, you love winning games when you lost a turn, yeah. You guys are, have such hard heads, you and Jackson. Like, it's just, I, yeah, I can't. I can't. Like, it's just so bad. It's wrong on so many levels. Like one of those dad jokes about elevators. Um, all right, so Jackson's first, and he has to exchange first turn again. Exchange is three. Has to be correct. And again, I open with the bingo of Torment. So I could play it with like 
Tormentor, Tormented. Or I could play it here, which might allow more like big bingos. So it seemed like a toss up. I decided to play with the E on the star. Uh, Jackson does not draw into a bingo. He plays Zen. He decides to play it here rather than here. I guess he doesn't really believe that even if I overlap, his re-overlaps are really worth much. Um, it's interesting. I'd say that maybe he does want to sort of distract me with these overlaps so that he could bingo elsewhere on the board, but nah, this seems fine. Um, I draw this and play Tux. You saw Torment, nice. Oh, Tormental! I totally forgot about that. That's really interesting. That changes that changes the game. Nice. Yeah, I didn't know that word. Tormental. Takes the I-L. So I play Tux. Very easy play. And Jackson makes an awesome play of Gownsman. Gownsman. Oh, so that's a professional or academic person. So I was trying to figure out what this meant. Because I held this play for like two minutes. Maybe more. I was trying to remember, is Townsman good? Swingman, Swingman is good. Swingman is good. Is that, are we confused with that? Snowman does have eight letter words. I was trying to remember. I think I've like looked that up before and I just couldn't remember um, if Gownsman was good. Gownsman. And I thought maybe this meant like the person that, that carries the, uh, the um, the uh, wedding gown at a wedding ceremony so that it doesn't drag on the floor. That's what I thought that that might mean. Anyways, after a while, I let it go. Uh, I was also trying to see if I had a playable bingo at this rack. Um, and I originally didn't see one. So, like, was worth challenging. A, because if it comes off, I would have a bingo. Um, B, if it doesn't come off, he could give me a, a spot to play a bingo, but then I spotted roulettes, which is the only bingo here. Exactly not Thirsty Duke. You better, you better prove yourself soon. Because, uh, yeah, some of these moves were horrendous. So I play roulettes, Jackson plays now I. And I made a play here I didn't want to make, but it just seemed like better than everything else. Roulette's is pedestrian? It is. I'm surprised I even saw it. I guess I could do something like beer here. It's just not it's just not worth it. Like I think the fact that torment the torment's hook is there anyway, like it's gonna be so hard to block that. So whatever, might as well just play aggressively, try to bingo. So I play pie. Man, Jackson's been drawing all of the G's. Like, look at this shit. He plays Qua. Yeah, Kot ruins his ING potential. So I like this decision to play Qua and try and draw bingo through the end. And then this hilarious moment occurs. Yeah, geez. I have this rack and immediately I spot Fibrine. And I'm just like, oh my God, Jackson played that word. Jackson played that word. Where did he play that word? When did he play that word? But most importantly, was it a word or not? Oh my god, Chura, are you serious? <laughs> this is something in the air. Did you get away with it? Were they watchers of the Nationals footage? It stayed. That's two, two for two. Okay, so I was freaking out here because obviously I knew Fibrin was a word. And it's really tricky to know whether these IN words take an E. And I was just like, I know Jackson played it, and I think it wasn't a word. I just can't remember challenging it off. 
And I couldn't remember where it was from, but it was from Nationals. It was from Nationals. Let me show you all. Where it's from. All right, well, we are. All right, well, we are. M A G G. There it is. And as a six is. Fibrin. Except pluralizing Hedra. I really like what that does for you in the future. Turo's won her last 17 games of club. Oh my god. Points. Play here is actually really cute. Um, by far, I think his strongest option, uh, because Joey just played. By vinyl. Extending it just like this. By. Twenty five. No. Um, Joey play or Jackson playing a phony here, I believe. Phi Brin wow. is no good. Phi Brin as a. You see Joey. Phi Joey like. Phi Brin wow. Look at his eyes. He was trying to remember, but there's this like, yeah, I know this is a messed up, uh, hold on, messed up scene here, but Joey blinked. What's funny is that like, there's so much posturing, there is so much posturing at the top level of Scrabble, especially because it's like almost all men, like, you don't want to hold. You don't even want to hold words. You're too proud to hold words. So Joey was probably just too proud to even doubt this word because he wasn't sure. And he didn't want to show weakness. Just like what I was showing you guys with AIS. I don't want to show weakness about boxings. <laughs> like, so he didn't even hold. Did he hold? I don't think he held. Six is, but Fibrine as a no. weapon is not. And it does wow. give Joey back Nutsedge out of this round. And yeah, I think because Joey realized it gave him a bingo, he didn't even want to think about it. So this is where it's from, and I couldn't remember. It's so freaking difficult to remember where phonies come from and whether they're phony. Our brains are not properly functional when it comes to words that have been on a Scrabble board before. It's just so impossible to remember if they were words or not. They're on a board. Chances are your brain considers them a word. Sometimes you remember that it was phony, but... In this position, I was like, oh my god, I can't remember. Did he play it on me? Because there was a situation where he played, like, fluorine, I-N-E. I was almost challenged. I just couldn't remember. And so I didn't even want to play Fibrin. Because I wouldn't have been able to challenge if he hooked an E. Or wouldn't have known whether or not to challenge. And I thought Fibrin was probably a better play than what I ended up playing of Fiber. It's true, Zorex. They become words when people use them. So Fiber, I think, is worse. Even though it's nice to keep the last N, um, there are lots of I's to come. Uh, also lots of E's to come. But yeah, probably slightly better to play Fibrin. But I just could not remember if Fibrin was a word. And uh, what's even funnier is Jackson also couldn't remember immediately. It's like, oh, I played that against Joey. That is that good? I don't remember. Like he couldn't even remember if it was good or not. He, he played it. It's crazy. So I might have been, gotten away with his own phony on him, which he's done to me before. But yeah, I played fiber. Um, so I dodged a bullet for sure, but I spent way too long just being like, I don't know what to do. Um, and then I got into this weird position. And first thing I considered was like, yeah, 
or something, or Fife. I didn't like the looks of that. I guess I could have some plan of playing this and then playing Jin next turn. But yeah, not super ideal. But I'm, I'm ahead very nicely here. And I kind of want to deal with this area. Because I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with the DNS hooks on Fiber. Or the end of now I. But I can deal with some stuff. And so I considered playing Jeer. And I considered playing Feiss. And Feiss at least handles the M column. Um, although you can put an S on Feiss. So it's not great, but it, it has some value to it. And keeping the J could also have some value to it as well. Um, I could draw into some, some decent J plays, I guess. But not that many. The J is probably more of a nuisance here than anything else. Hello, Pawn Messer. What's up? Uh, but yeah, Jeer, it's probably, the I don't know, it's probably fine. Um, I draw into lots of bingos like financed or something. Um, but I'm not sure. This is a weird decision. It's nice to keep a vowel too, which I didn't do. And then Jackson makes this play of teaked, and I hated this word. This did not look like a valid word at all to me. And so I held once again for a really, really long time. I was like, teaking, that's not a word, teaking. That can't be a word, teaking. So teaked would have to be an adjective. Like, is something teaked if it's the color teak? Like, it didn't make sense at all. But why would he play this? Like, he knows sixes pretty well, probably better than me. Like, what? what, what is this? Like, he has fake. Like, he has very many valid plays. Uh, let's actually put his full rack here to see why. He did this, ah, because he had two T's, of course. So he plays teaked, and I finally gather the courage to challenge. And luckily I was right, it's not a word. Staked, not a valid word, yeah. It was a typo. Yeah, it doesn't work. My sound alerts don't work. I don't know how to get them working again. I pro it probably just requires a few buttons to be pressed. So now I'm just winning, like, probably. I mean, the board's still open. There's still two blanks out, but he's not been going next turn. I have a high-scoring J play of Jam. And he is probably distraught. Um, but he ends up playing Fake. Um, so I was, yeah, I was feeling pretty good here. Uh, had this rack and, uh, didn't want to do this or this because I'm up on on open triple triples. Thank you, Chess Bunzo. Um, so I ended up playing Waker, which I actually wasn't a hundred percent sure was a valid word, but reasonably sure that it was valid. And I liked it more than Waken. Uh, because, yeah, again, this is the last N. Having the last of a tile is good. And, yeah, N is more workable than the R to deal with some awkward racks. And it's harder to hook this and go all the way down. So Waker seems like a better play for sure. And mostly I'm just trying to inhibit this E that was just opened. Um... Jackson draws this rack and ooh, no U for out study. Uh, but yeah, at this point he wasn't sure if fibered. He thought fibered wasn't a word. And he explained because at some point prior to fibered being added to the dictionary, which I presume happened in uh, in NWL in 2014 or something. Um, he had a conversation. He remembers talking about how Fibered was only good E-R-E-D. So because of that, he didn't play something like do uh, Duty or Toady. Oh, to Toy is interesting. Yeah, he, he played Tony. He's probably just trying to bingo and like leave parts of the board open. 
Uh, so they can maybe bingo again, but yeah. Definitely full tilt mode. Um, and here I take the opportunity, even though I don't usually like leaving lone eyes on my rack, I take the opportunity to play nudely uh, just because if he's unsure of either of these words or both, he's probably challenging at this score. But I was sure of both of them. And yeah, he ends up challenging. Um, and I don't draw both blanks, but I do draw one of them. And I play Shiv, whatever. I don't want bingos to come down here. If he bingos here, that's fine. The board's dead. Uh, yeah, just trying to clean up here. Um, and he's also playing instantly. He's probably not making the best plays. Yeah, like here, Studio is by far the best play. It actually, it doesn't give him a chance, but yeah, it might make me shudder a little bit. Um, he plays Doubts. And uh, I play Idle. And yeah, the rest of this game doesn't matter. He didn't record his last letter here. He played four right. Um Yeah, I don't have information. And uh, I thought there was one tile left in the bag, but these were the letters I tracked, and I saw that he had Cinereal to this L, which is I knew was Collins only, so I didn't block it. Havoc is better than my play. But whatever, I play Vapor. Um, he plays Cardio. And I play Hot. Okay. Hot. And I won 458 to 305. So that was a nice win. Uh, we won uh, We won two challenges. Avoided challenging a valid word. Avoided playing a phony that Jackson himself played. Tanglier is a word, just not in CEL, yeah. Tangly is probably a word in CEL. It's not tanglier. Oh no, just tangled, I guess, is the common English way of saying that. Hey, Truth Main. Hey, Finland. Hey, Jeff, New York Chess. Sorry, I hope you guys weren't waiting for me to say hi for too long. I hope you're still here. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this was game four of five. Oh wow, I'm not even going to finish before midnight. Um, I was playing second best player in North America, two-time North American champion, Jackson Smiley. And we got a five, five game session in today. I streamed it too. Um, and usually Jackson goes over the games and analyzes them, but He's going away, so he asked me if I would do it this time, and I said, sure, let's stream it. So that was four game four. It's two to two. Winner takes all, and I'm first. So I have small advantage there. In Scrabble, for those unaware, uh, going first gives you around a 15 to 20 point advantage over your opponent. Um... And average scores being around 400, whatever, that's um, 430. That means um, what does that mean? 20 out of 420 is 21. That means you should be winning like 64% or 54%, 55% um, or something like that. It would be standard deviation of score. It matters a little bit, five crab, but you're right. That standard deviation is more important. Anyways. Um, and as it was in... Two of the four games, one of the players opens with an exchange three. 5% edge, truth main. Hey. Um, I exchanged here. When the best play is probably just rind for 10, it's sufficiently defensive. 
Um, maybe. But it seems close. But I ended up exchanging down to N-I-S-S, which doesn't even appear. Um, yeah, you could also do Rhines as well, but... Yeah, these positions, they happen, they happen a ton, actually, uh, where it's really close between playing through, like playing your only vowel, playing through, versus exchanging, keeping better letters. It's always very, very close. Um, Jackson quickly plays vague here, which sets up his X quite nicely, so... Makes sense. Um, I don't draw a vowel. Yeah, IRSS might be better there. I tend to overvalue the N, I find, over the R. But I's usually go better with N's than with R's. But the R is just a better letter. Yeah, here I played GAMS, I didn't really know. Uh, was, wasn't super happy with this position, but whatever. Um, and here Jackson, wow. Oh no. Oh no. This was a missed bingo. Oh, I'll do the, I'll do the same five crab. You know, this is NWL 18, right? No, I didn't miss it. Jackson missed it. He needs to drink the hot sauce. So here he plays ax for 19. Which, I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's not great, but yeah, definitely need to bingo there. Um, what's interesting is I would have scored over 100 points if he had bingoed with taxables. I would have played snitched. Uh, 8, 10, 8, 10, 14, 18, yeah. I would have scored 104 off of his bingo, which is just not quite fair. Yeah, taxables. It's the taxable goods. He used to eat chard. So yeah, here I had uh, Chins and Schneeds. These are the two options. This scores three more points, but um, the issue with that is look how much I'm giving back. I'm giving back like... All of these bingos, especially the double-double through the N after the play of AX, which is very sus. Very sus play means he's keeping very strong letters. I actually thought it was likelier that he was keeping like three bingo consonants, a vowel, and a blank with his play of AX. Like T-R-N blank, uh, T-A-R-N blank or something, I don't know. Um... But yeah, I was not super thrilled with what this gave back uh, versus Schneeds, which does give back an S uh, and this D as well. But no double doubles. And yeah, I think his bingos will score less. I think I'm scoring potentially more next turn. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure if I should have sacrificed so many points. Uh, Jackson held this play, but accepted. He asked me if we were playing, what dictionary we were playing, which I don't know why. Like, Schneed was added in, I think, 2018, Schneed? Um, so, unless we were playing, like, a prior to 2018 dictionary. I don't know. Tanglier is so much more common than transaxle. Okay, whatever you say, not thirsty, Duke. Um... And yeah, now, so Jackson would not have been able to play Analytes or Acolytes. Actually, I think I was fine after Chins, too. Chins. Yeah, he ends up playing Oi, which, yeah, I mean, what do you do other than that? Like, you don't want to do this. Just makes your rack worse, probably. And blocks the top left. Yeah, this is a tough position. Ryan's out on top, Dins and Ryan for an exchanging DNS, slightly affirms DNR. Um, 
Yeah, Jackson said he would have kept R-I-N-S. Is that what DNR is? Or sorry, is that what DNS is? Yeah. Yeah, Jackson said he would have kept R-I-N-S. Um, yeah, this saves my rack. Wait. No, no, this isn't what I had. I think I gave him the wrong info. Yeah, I played Bolt TNN, I think is what I kept, yeah. Yeah, because I was, okay, yeah. So I played Bolt and, man. Yeah, nothing, nothing plays here. Jackson plays AI. Yeah, not looking so great, but he still has options. Maybe plays through the T or with bolts over here. He's keeping space open. Um, here I had N L N R. Yeah. And I ended up playing punt or punt here. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this position. Um, oh, wow. That's a really funny play. So I considered this play, I considered this play, and I considered this play. And I figured Jackson probably didn't have a blank with his last plays. Because with the blank, you can afford to be a little bit less, like, super aggro in that, those sorts of positions. You can take a bit more points because your blank's going to let you bingo so much. So I figured he probably didn't have a blank. So probably likelier to have an S. So playing Pern... Might not be so good just giving him an S bingo a lot of the time. And by playing Lunt. Oh, I should have played Lunt. Oh, this is just a better play. Lunt is just a better play. Oh, I can't believe I didn't even consider that. Lunt makes it harder to bingo on this side. And also doesn't create an O hook. And keeps the P for scoring here. Yeah, this is a terrible play on my part. Whereas punt allows more bingos to play. And leaves me with very trash letters. Okay, so this is a clear mistake for sure. Jackson Shaw is the Q. Immediately plays QI. And... Yeah. Now I'm stuck with this crap, which I shouldn't have. I should have a P to be able to score with. Oh, thank you for deleting InfiniWare's message. And here is the moment of truth, everybody. After Jackson played Axe, then Oi, then AI, then QI... Would you have the gut to play Lorne? Moment of truth before the clock strikes midnight. Say something or be deemed a pumpkin in one minute. You're all turning into a pumpkin. What I'm worried about here is that I'm not up as much as I want to be. 
I'm only up 34 now, and I know that he is extremely close to a bingo. But I also expect him not to have a blank. So opening this triple-triple, even if he's keeping something like what he was keeping, isn't that bad. There aren't that many triple-triples. And the triple triples, of course, they suck. They score 131. I'll be down um, 72 if he triple triples with like all one point tiles. And I do not want to be down 72, especially on this board. So, however often it is they triple triples after Lorne, I'm in pretty bad position. You're a pumpkin, Silica? Well, and hello to Skylar. So the question is, do I trust in the numbers? Do I trust that he's not that likely to hit the triple-triple? Because here's the problem. Let's say I don't play Lorne. I could play Lun. Yeah, Lun is a good play. Keeps I N O R T. I can bingo a lot here on this this area, but if Jackson is going to bingo, where is he going to bingo? Most likely he's going to bingo here. And that's not a big deal because it opens up triples. But with INORT, I'm not hitting those triples very hard. So I felt like if I was going to do something like LUN, I would rather play longer with something like this and hope to draw a high scoring tile to better respond two bingos on the end column. The problem is if I don't do that, if I play something longer and he bingos somewhere else, like if he bingos through the T or with bolts, now my leave is just worse and I'm in the same sort of position where I don't want to open a triple. So I have to judge like how good his rack is. I have to like have a heat map in my head of how likely he is to go here versus here versus here and how that affects my thought process but I should probably just suck it up <laughs> Silica. I should probably just suck it up cupcake right muffin with tentacles he's still here yeah that's a great emote never seen it And just play Lorne. Be like, I don't care. Bosh him to the wind. I don't like Lun. But yeah. I ended up playing in run. And he drew the J. <laughs> hey, Sincav. He plays Jail. And now I'm just like, what the hell is going on? I'm no longer like in the lead, really. I'm up 11 points. Jackson's been fishing, but he somehow is drawn into these like high scoring plays that score as much as a bingo would have over two turns. And now I just drew two W's. So the first thing I considered was WA, and I'm like, okay, there's one L left. There's two S's left. He probably has an S, right? Probably. But now he's sort of ruined his rack with the play of jail. He doesn't have such great letters. So maybe by playing Wa, I'm just basically forcing him to use his S. And if he doesn't, then I can score with wall. I mean, but what else is there? Aw? That's what I was the other thing I was considering. Keeping a W. Going up by 35. Just leaving it all up to, like, if he bingos next turn after all, like, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, yeah, all of, everything here sucked. Uh, maybe I should just play wall immediately. Don't want to do this or this or whatever. 
yeah, everything really sucked here. So I decided, okay, time to be aggressive. And then Jackson had this rack. So he didn't draw into a bingo with EST. And he could have played Yag. But he decided that I must have an S or an L or something good. And he played stagey for 43 to take a small lead. Go for the blanks. Now that he's played his S, and I draw the blank. Did I miss a bingo here? No. Good. Didn't think I did. Now Jackson's ahead, but I have a blank. And he's just used his S. So maybe he has another one. I don't know what he has. And so here I played OE. So now it's my turn to fish. <laughs> now I'm trying to hit OES bingos or whatever. But I don't want to play toe. Because that takes an A hook, a D hook, and an S hook. And makes my rack worse. I don't want to do toll. That just... Let's him score so much. Lou takes too many hooks. Two takes too many hooks. So I think my play makes sense. Oh, Jocelot. Where's Jocelot? I hope he's okay. I could play Eco, but no, I think, you know, I've been playing defensive, now to play aggressive. So I play OE and Jackson. Tragically, it keeps a C and draws F L N R R Z. So he tragically draws no vowels here. And there's literally nothing to do. So he exchanges down to R Z. You should probably exchange down to just Z. But actually, no, I think it's probably right because there are so many vowels left. 23 vowels, 18 consonants. Bang, ding, ow, yeah, exactly. It's just a consonant. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. That's why I originally was like, I don't like this. But it's just a consonant. So, I don't know, it's still maybe just better. Um. Like, you get Zori, I don't know. It's still maybe better to just keep the, the lone Z, but I understand the decision. ZN maybe, yeah. You can sim it. And I draw um, a vowel and a consonant, so I'm able to bingo here. Uh, feedlot plays in two spots. I take the higher scoring spot. This is also a more dangerous spot, so yeah, you gotta take this. Um, and yeah, Jackson does draw another a ton of vowels here, so um, good on him for keeping a constant, I guess. But now he's in pretty bad shape. I don't think he can afford to do this. Uh, maybe. He plays Rive. Again, the Z is like not very good here. But yeah, Vizier is pretty bad as well. Yeah, he's going for a Zier or Izer stuff. And then, out of nowhere... This is my pull. <laughs> so after this absurd game of fish, try to block, fish, try to block, then score, try to block, or try to respond, score, somehow in terrible shape, draw a blank out of nowhere, bingo, now I'm in great shape, I draw this and the game is just over. And I play Outlast. And I'm up 138.
I just don't understand. So Jackson, again, keeping the Z. Now he needs it for a huge, huge bingo. Plays Rue, and I'm just like, I'm not having it. Uh, let's end the game now. So I played Dimeter for 11. I just felt like ridiculous here. Now he can probably not bingo twice because there are no T's for twit. Um, so even if he bingos once, I'm just going to block. And uh, yeah, the best he can do is probably try to open something, but I'll be ahead by enough. And again, he's only going to be bingoing once. So the game is over after this play. We both knew it. Uh, Jackson just plays fur. Doesn't matter. We both know it's it's done. Um, I could do whatever I want here. At first, I put down E H, even though there was no T left, because I wasn't tracking. And then I just played echo, 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 echo. And he wanted to play zip, try and triple, triple, but he realized it would be emptying the bag, so he played prize. And um, yeah. I didn't know what he had. He didn't know what I had. I just played feigned, or sorry, feigner. Keep id for prized. He plays knife. He should play fake key to block prize, but again, we're not tracking. This game ended very stupidly. Me winning 441 to 340. There you go. Why not he in the same spot? Because Swift is a word. But again, like, there was nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, and that's how I beat Jackson in the series. And, uh, I don't know. Pretty crazy stuff. Game one and game two were pretty good. Game three and four sucked, and game this game was just absurd. I mean, taxables was was the game probably. He plays taxables. I play snitched, and I'm up by like twenty five or something. That's fine. Yeah, uh, best of five, twenty twenty four three twenty eight five. So off stream, I'm going to put some commentary in these last three games and post them onto cross tables. But I appreciate everybody for watching. My voice is gone. Let's raid somebody. Is Austin still live? Was he ever live? These are questions I would like to know. Oh yeah, Austin is live. Okay, he's still playing. He's still playing. Let's go. Let's raid Austin. If you don't want to follow the raid, that's okay. Go follow him. Uh, Austin is one of the best players in the world. Uh, he's racing to 10 wins against best bot. Oh, the, the strongest bot in the world. Best bot. And he's currently five to eight, which is pretty good. Thank you for the follow, the only Juan. Um, and goodbye, Panther Shoes. And yeah, enjoy Austin. Thank you, Finland. Thank you, everybody on YouTube. Uh, I promise to have some content for you soon. Um, if not this week, but next week. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff coming. I'm going to be streaming for sure on Sunday, my pub tournament. Um, the local tournament that I run uh, every couple months. And uh, yeah, then I'll be back on Monday probably. Oh yeah, Monday is the Mundaily tournament I run online.